Throughout the past decades, African leaders have faced a common problem. People or groups who disagree with their political ideas and plans have often stopped them from speaking out. Prolonged dictatorships and the necessity for government reorganization are two of the most well-known causes for most of these hindrances. Those responsible for suppressing African leaders use a variety of strategies to achieve their objectives. They may acquire power by coups, often known as military takeovers, or through strategic silencing with the help of former colonial countries. These activities are intended to protect political, economic, and social advantages of these colonial masterminds. In today's video, we'll be talking about some 10 African leaders who refused to be puppets and were rumored to be silenced by the West, exploring the circumstances surrounding their disappearance. The consequences of their demise have had both positive and negative impacts, with the negative effects still felt today. During our analysis, we will also attempt to uncover the individuals and groups potentially associated with their disappearances. While the list could be extensive, we have carefully selected leaders whose stories have had a profound impact on the continent. Get ready to settle in and enjoy the video. Feel free to share your thoughts and leave a comment at the end. Without further ado, let's begin our journey into the intriguing stories of these African leaders. 1. Patrice Emery Lumumba Patrice Lumumba, a remarkable Congolese politician and advocate for independence, held the esteemed position of the first Prime Minister of the Democratic Republic of the Congo from June to September 1960. Throughout his tenure, Lumumba emerged as a charismatic leader, spearheading the Congolese national movement's fight against Belgian colonial and imperial rule. One defining moment of Lumumba's resistance occurred when he openly opposed the Belgian authorities' proposed plan for Congo's path to independence. He believed that the program aimed to install compliant individuals as puppets before granting independence. Consequently, Lumumba called for a boycott of the local elections scheduled for December 19, 1959. In response to his actions, the Belgian authorities retaliated, leading to a clash in Stanleyville on October 20, 1959, resulting in chaos. Lumumba, later caught in a coup, went through pain and met his demise in Katanga province on January 17, 1961. Disturbingly, the Belgian authorities and the United States were alleged to have collaborated in his silencing. Lumumba's termination signaled the end of his grand vision for a united, democratic, ethnically diverse, and pan-Africanist Congo. Today, Patrice Lumumba stands as an enduring symbol of freedom and remains one of Africa's heroic figures of the 20th century. 2. Thomas Sankara Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara, a former military commander, Marxist, and staunch pan-Africanist, took the helm of Burkina Faso after a successful coup in 1983, leading the nation until his deposition and death in 1987. Revered as the Che Guevara of Africa, Sankara left an enduring legacy of high ideals and profound impact during his remarkable 27-year political career. Sankara, driven by his Marxist beliefs, fervently championed Burkina Faso's independence from France and other Western powers while striving to foster genuine Pan-African unity. As he climbed the ranks, he utilized his position to rally the people for transformative change and challenge the entrenched power of the old, corrupt elites. Together with his colleagues, Sankara implemented economic and social reforms that aimed to reduce reliance on foreign aid and instead prioritized the utilization of domestic resources to construct schools, healthcare centers, and public infrastructure. His visionary approach and effective changes earned him admiration not only within Burkina Faso but also across Africa and beyond. Sadly, Sankara's ambitious vision was cut short when he was captured and silenced in 1987. The circumstances surrounding his demise involved a combination of internal and external opposition within his administration and the military. Despite his untimely death, Thomas Sankara's ideals and contributions continue to resonate, leaving an indelible mark on the history and progress of his beloved country, Burkina Faso. 3. Mary Nwabi President Mary Nwabi, serving as the third president of the Congo from January 1, 1969 to March 18, 1977, left a significant imprint on the country during his tenure. Nwabi embraced Marxist economic principles, leading to a transformation of the Congo into a state influenced by Marxist ideology, which he named the People's Republic of Congo at the beginning of his presidency. 
Under his leadership, President Marin established the Congolese Workers' Party as the sole political organization in the country. His governing style reflected elements of Jacobinism, resulting in a centralization of power in the capital and a decrease in influence in the regions. Being from the northern part of Congo, Nwabi faced opposition from southern communists who disagreed with his approach. This provoked fierce debates even among younger political groups. Tragically, on March 18, 1977, President Nwabi was silenced. Investigations were carried out, leading to the punishment of several individuals suspected of involvement in his silencing. Following the incident, the Congolese people were placed under interim military rule until a suitable candidate could be identified to assume the presidency. 4. Joao Bernardo Vieira Joao Bernardo Vieira, a Bissau Guinean politician, held the position of president in his country for two separate periods. He first assumed the presidency from 1980 to 1999, with a brief interruption of three days in May 1984. Then, after a period of exile, he regained power and served as president again from 2005 to 2009. Reports indicate that Joao Bernardo Vieira met a tragic end in 2009, as he was silenced under mysterious circumstances. Vieira initially came to power through a coup in 1980 and remained in office until 1994. Despite being deposed in 1999, he made a political comeback and won a democratic election in 2005, securing his third term as president after returning from exile. The circumstances surrounding Vieira's passing and that of his army chief of staff, General Batista Tegmi Nawe, who tragically lost his life due to an explosion in his own residence a day earlier, have sparked speculation that these incidents may not have been spontaneous in nature. The exact details and motivations behind these may vary, but it is clear that they were tragic events that shook the nation of Guinea-Bissau. 5. Muammar Gaddafi Muammar Gaddafi assumed power in Libya through a military coup in 1969, leading to the overthrow of King Idris. He aimed to establish a socialist government, focusing on combating corruption and promoting equality within the country. However, his regime became associated with authoritarianism and human rights violations. Gaddafi's rule spanned 42 years, during which he exercised strict control over Libya's political institutions and suppressed dissenting voices. His government employed repressive tactics such as censorship, arbitrary detentions, and the mistreatment of political opponents. Additionally, Gaddafi sponsored international terrorist groups and was implicated in various acts of violence, including the bombing of Pan AM Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland, in 1988. In 2011, Libya experienced a wave of popular uprisings as part of the Arab Spring, leading to a civil war between Gaddafi's forces and rebel groups seeking to remove him from power. The conflict escalated, and a NATO-led intervention provided support to the rebels. Eventually, Gaddafi was captured and silenced by rebel forces on October 20, 2011, under circumstances that remain subject to debate. The demise of Gaddafi's dictatorship marked a significant turning point for Libya, but it also brought about political instability, ongoing armed conflicts, and the emergence of extremist groups within the country. The legacy of Muammar Gaddafi remains a topic of discussion and disagreement, with varying opinions on his impact on Libya and the broader political landscape. 6. Mohamed Boudiaf Mohamed Boudiaf, born on June 23, 1919, in Saila, Algeria, played a significant role in Algeria's quest for independence from French colonial rule. He was a prominent figure in the Algerian National Liberation Front FLN, which led the country to independence. Boudiaf actively participated in the nationalist movement against French colonial administration and rose to prominence by 1950. In 1954, he joined the FLN Leadership Council alongside Ahmed Ben Bella. Boudiaf and Ben Bella were captured and imprisoned by the French from 1956 to 1962 but were eventually released to establish a temporary administration in the newly independent Algeria, with Boudiaf serving as deputy prime minister. After spending 27 years in exile in Morocco, Boudiaf returned to Algeria and was elected as president in 1992. At that time, Algeria was experiencing political unrest, with growing support for Islamic fundamentalist groups. Boudiaf was invited to chair a military backstate state council in an attempt to stabilize the country. 
regrettably, Budiaf's presidency was short-lived. On June 29, 1992, while delivering a speech, he was silenced by one of his bodyguards. The circumstances surrounding his silencing remain controversial and subject to speculation. While some sources suggest potential involvement of the French government, there is a lack of concrete evidence supporting such claims. Boudiaf's silencing deeply shocked the nation and exacerbated the political crisis in Algeria. His death had a lasting impact on the country's political landscape, and he is remembered as an emblematic figure of Algeria's struggle for independence and the challenges encountered during the post-independence era. 7. General Ibrahim Beamenesara General Ibrahim Beamenesara was a military officer and diplomat who assumed power in Niger after overthrowing the democratically elected President Mahomene Ousmane in a military coup. However, his rule ended tragically when he was silenced in April 1999 during a military coup. Menesara met his demise when his own military convoy turned their backs on him as he attempted to flee the country through Niomey Airport, the capital's airport. The silencing of Menesara resulted from internal dissent within the military and his refusal to step down despite repeated calls for his resignation. His administration had accumulated significant debt, leading to months of unpaid salaries for government employees. This financial crisis and the resulting grievances are believed to have contributed to the circumstances surrounding his demise. At the time, Prime Minister Ibrahim Hossein Mayaki claimed that Menesara's death was the result of an unfortunate accident. However, doubts and speculation persist regarding the official explanation of the incident. The silencing of General Ibrahim Bea Menesara marked a significant turning point in Niger's political landscape. It triggered a period of transition and political instability in the country, ultimately leading to subsequent changes in leadership and the restoration of democratic governance. 8. General Matala Muhammad Matala Muhammad indeed served as the head of state and top commander of the armed forces in Nigeria from 1975 to 1976. However, his tenure was tragically cut short when he was silenced in Lagos, Nigeria, on February 13, 1976, during an attempted coup. According to various media reports, Lieutenant Colonel Buka Saka Dimka intercepted General Matala Muhammad's Mercedes vehicle that day and carried out the silencing. Following the act, Dimka proceeded to the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation to announce the success of the coup and outline its motives. However, he was unable to complete his address as he narrowly evaded capture. Dimka managed to escape initially but was later apprehended on May 15, 1976, along with his accomplices. They were subsequently publicly silenced. General Olushegun Obosanjo and Yakubu Danjuma, who were also targeted for termination but left their residences later than Matola Muhammad, managed to avoid the attack. It is believed that the broadcast of the termination and the delayed departures from their respective locations played a role in their survival. The termination of Matola Muhammad had a profound impact on Nigeria, as he was regarded as a charismatic and reform-oriented leader. His untimely death led to a period of political uncertainty and transition in the country, with General Olushegun Obosanjo eventually assuming leadership and continuing Matala's reform agenda. Matala Muhammad is remembered as a visionary leader who aimed to combat corruption and improve the well-being of Nigerians during his brief time in office. 9. Juvenal Habirimina Juvenal Habirimina was indeed a Rwandan politician and military officer who served as the president of Rwanda from 1973 to 1994. On April 6, 1994, a Dassault Falcon jet carrying Habirimina and Burundian President Cyprien Tariamara was brought down as it approached Kigali International Airport for a layover en route to Bujumbura, Burundi. The termination of President Habirimina had profound consequences and further inflamed the existing ethnic tensions between the Hutu and Tutsi populations in Rwanda. In a country where tribal identification played a significant role, his death intensified divisions and became a catalyst for the Rwandan genocide that unfolded in the following months. It is important to recognize that the debate surrounding Habirimina's termination remains contentious and sensitive in Rwanda, and multiple narratives and interpretations persist. The event marked a pivotal moment in Rwandan history, leading to one of the most devastating and tragic genocides of the 20th century. 10. Melchionde Day Melchionde Day was indeed a prominent Hutu politician in Burundi. 
After the country's first democratic elections in 1993, he became the president of Burundi, marking a significant milestone in the nation's history. Nede formed a multi-ethnic government that included Tutsi politicians, aiming to promote inclusivity and address issues such as corruption and inequality. Tragically, Nede's time in office was abruptly cut short. Just three months after assuming the presidency, he was silenced in a military coup led by Tutsi army officers on October 21, 1993. Alongside Nede, several other high-ranking members of his government were also terminated. The silencing of Nide ignited a wave of violence between Hutus and Tutsis, triggering a protracted civil war in Burundi that lasted for over a decade. The silencing of Melchior Nide remains a highly contentious event in Burundi's history. It deepened the ethnic divisions and tensions that had long existed in the country. Nide is remembered as a symbol of hope for democratic change and as a leader who sought to create a more inclusive society. Despite the tragic circumstances surrounding his death, Nede's legacy is still celebrated by many Burundians who view him as an inspirational figure and an advocate for peace and equality in the nation. The alleged demise of these African leaders serve as reminders of the challenges faced by the continent in its pursuit of progress and stability. The loss of these leaders not only hindered the advancements that had been made but also caused significant disruptions to their countries and the broader region. It is important to honor the legacies of these leaders and strive towards creating a future that is peaceful and fair for everyone. Let us remember that their visions and dreams continue to inspire us as we work towards a better world. Thank you for watching today's content. If you enjoyed this video, we would appreciate your support by leaving a like and sharing your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.